has got to be at most uh, 40 inches, and the human beings uh, stood up on a pole that should be 12 inches. And that has got to be done. It is meant in order to protect the dignity and integrity of this country. So we have a lot of awareness of it, even on the flag, so that we're public official. We have flags on the vehicle. It means they would indeed take care of the vehicles in different ways, uh, in manner. And they wouldn't abuse the vehicles. So we'll be having conversations on that as to how public officials can begin to use their public flag on the vehicles. They use their public flag on the building. And the flag has got to be used. And if the flag is in the environment, how do you pass the flag? You can see in the building. There's a seat that's in the middle of this room. Once the seat is there, you are prohibited from walking past that seat. You need to pass either on the left or the right and not to actually pass on that seat. If you did that, you are violated. If you call the crime level, you'll be violated to the land of the patriotic law and then you violate the code of crime level. So my feeling uh, is uh, one that is, is a challenge for feeling. Uh, that feels scared, that feels melt, uh, that I have to start an office, that have no history in the country, and so required a lot of think through, a lot of training. Thank you. So, I would... Yes, I hope I can do what will be right, and that's why I'm going to be calling on all government officials, wherever you are, we have developed a form that I refer to as form number one of the Office of Ombudsman. We're going to work on modality with the Executive Mansion website. That the form is going to be placed on the Executive Mansion website. And what you have to do is to get download the form, write your name in the form, write your agency and your position, and all you have got to do is then sign, indicating the, the date and the time at which you are actually signed that. Once you have done that, you will take that form and you will deposit that form with the human resource officer of your respective agency or someone who is in that entity responsible for ACA. But we have to create a lot of awareness on that so that we can all sign the code of conduct as was done today. You said the president has signed the code of conduct and he gave us that code of conduct. We are going to ACA that code of conduct. And when it's archived, we are going to give one copy to uh, the president, and all the copies are going to be used for official functions uh, and training. Okay. So we encourage all of you okay. to begin to think about how to sign the code of conduct mm -hmm. as a matter of quoting the rule of law. Okay, um, I'm a government official. I violated. And you call me for questioning, and I did not come. Is there any penalty? So. The law provides that all requests, citation, and dialogue, research that are going to be done by the ombudsman should be obeyed. A failure to do that means you are in violation of the code of conduct and you can be subjected to a number of legal uh, uh, sanctions. For example, you could be uh, prohibited from receiving your pay, you could actually be uh, Knowledge by the agency, ongoing training for that violation, and a number of other penalties that are there. But it will require awareness. Now, how do we start our awareness? Or we have to start on me as an ethics officer. For the next few days, I'm going to be uh, signing a bond as required by the Code of Conduct that government officials are to sign a bond if they are in position where they are going to commit the government contract or negotiate. As an ethics officer, I'm going to be doing that, so I have to be born. And when that bond is done, it's going to be submitted to the president. He's going to approve my bond. And the bond is going to be made available to the public, such that all the government officials that are going to be performing similar function in other within the executive, within the judiciary, within the legislative branch, will also be born as a matter of law. Okay. okay, so Mr. Uh, Councilor Kanga and Maurice Desmond Brown are put for terms of him. The office seems small in structure, structural wise, but it's a big office. Um, how do you intend to, to reach the gap of uh, information dissemination as it comes, I mean, as it relates to violations? Let's say, for example, in the Code of Conduct, you have a section that talks about government officials uh, being banned.
from uh, using the the uh, SR vehicle to bring maybe for example charcoals or other thing in that vehicle how do you how do you i mean how will you navigate you know your office in order to have those violations being documented we have an obligation to work with all the government agencies such as the police such as national security uh, agencies such as the judiciary such as the legislative branch such as civil society and individual libraries working with them will enable us to be able to do our job and i'm going to tell you the labyrinth people are willing for a change they are only waiting to see us start that and that's why you'll know, be starting that on me to ensure that you see that my asset is public uh, to ensure that you can begin to attract my asset if they are going to be development up and down in there you have to do that to ensure that um, you are doing things to hold me accountable as an ethics officer if you do not hold me accountable and follow the rules of the code you are not supporting the code of conduct you need to follow all members of the ombudsman to ensure that they should be the first to comply with the code at all times what is going to be in the offices or is going to be at the home at all times they are required to be courteous in the interaction they need to be exemplary in whatever they do they need to lead by example they need to do new things that are not actually bad by the law that's why they're being encouraged in order to have the asset public and they are being encouraged in order to born they, they must actually sign the law. Okay, uh, my name is Vasha Talu. I work for ELBC Radio. The the country is large. The country is big. So this is uh, around everywhere. You have um, small team. So how do you intend to reach to other areas that you have government officials, you know, in, in spreading this message? And also, the code of conduct can be effective or has been effective for the years when it comes to election. You talked about okay. Um, doing awareness. So how do you intend to reach to other counties so that the message can also reach to the officials of government and other people? So our, our, our plan is to have an office size of 125 men and women. And the means that they are going to be across all the political subdivisions. That are on start. We intend in order to have relationship with government entity that all, for example, the Ministry of Health that is fully decentralized, the court system that is fully decentralized, and other agencies that are decentralized, we partner with them as a way in order to uh, monitor the court. I'm going to tell you this. The first interaction with me as a chairperson of the Ombudsman was done by a lady from uh, Maryland. She was the first to have an interaction with me. So it tells you how the Liberian people who want to interact with their leaders in ways that they can have a conversation. So we had a conversation and we were able to solve a problem on the phone. But indeed you are right, we are going to be challenged. They're going to be slowly done. But we in the Office of Ombudsman cannot actually rely on challenge. We should actually lead by example, meaning we need to follow all the rules as much as possible. The Office of Ombudsman staff and those who have association with us, they need to follow all the rules at all times. What's the final yes. word? Yes. Final word, final word. Yes. Thank you. I'm Sylvester Troop, I work for the School Network. You have a very crucial responsibility in the fight against corruption in the office. And therefore, if sometimes we see threats from people who usually your office run after. So how do you stand? What could be your call to the government, knowing the history surrounding the office of the Ombudsman? Well, the office of the Ombudsman has got no history or threat. It's a new office, and we are the first time. And what we have actually received from the Liberian people is cooperation from all sectors. Uh, for example, folks at the National Legislature they are actually interested in the work of the Ombudsman. And so they want the Ombudsman to be effective. For example, we were not actually part of the budget debate, but the legislature were able to place in 100,000 in our budget for us, even though we were not part of that budget debate. So once they're gonna be on another budget debate, I'm sure we are not gonna actually be there. More so, because everyone wants to see the office work. The Ministry of Finance and Development Planning, we don't have money to actually employ staff now. They've seconded an accounting controller 
to us. Uh, the PPCC uh, also have seconded uh, a staff to us to handle our procurement uh, processes. Um, before the weekend, I'm told that the civil service agency is going to succumb a human resource personnel to our office in order to begin to do our work now. We do not have resources, but the agencies are willing order to, to second the staff to enable to, us to work. So threat, no, we have got no threat right now. Cooperation, yes, the Labrador are actually cooperating with us. So my final word would be, all of you in the media, you need to obey the code of conduct of the media practice. Your violation of the code of conduct within the practice of media, or whatever it is, it means you are violating the code of conduct. Your code of conduct as media practice uh, 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 practitioner, it reinforces the code of conduct. So if there is a complaint from you, what do we use in order to adjust you? We are going to use the code of conduct as provided for by the president and other codes that regulate uh, media. And so this is how the office is. The office is not of its own. The office relies on other agencies in order to have the work done. So you need to do that. All of you here, all of you here should be thinking on signing the code of conduct because you are providing a public service. Once you are providing the public service, you automatically are covered by the code of conduct. So we are all covering the code of conduct. The media should be thinking and having conversation on how they can now begin to sign the code of conduct. Thank you very much.